Good morning, everybody. It is Tanya, Thrifty Treasures. Welcome to episode four of Antique Booth Talk. And um, I hope everybody is having a happy new year. It's so glad to be back um, with you guys. I've missed y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to go through withdrawal. <laughs> I know, right? I can wait. I'm excited. So we have Jen, the pudgy picker, and Tammy from Tam's Place. And we are going to be talking about um, what's, what our plans are for 2018 for our antique uh, booths and also um, some mistakes uh, that we might have made in 2017. And uh, let's get right into it. So Sounds um, good. how was y'all's December? Like did y'all's antique mall, did y'all run any sales and how did you do for the month? Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure who wanted to go, who was going to go first. Um, well, let's see. The in my antique mall, they had a they the like the whole mall gave everybody the option to run a sale if they wanted to for after Thanksgiving. So um, I did run a sale. I did a ten percent off, and then um, again when we had our open house, which was a couple weeks later, um, we ran sales during that weekend as well. And I just continued to run the same sale. Actually, my November sales were better than December. Okay. So I did much better in November than I did December, which I was kind of surprised because I figured that December would be, I mean, December was good. Don't get me wrong, but November was a little better. Yeah. So what kind of a percentage did you run for yourself? I did 10%. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not much. Most of them, most of the people, well, some will do like 30 and 40%, but most people do 10 and 20%. Yeah. My, I did 50%. Oh, wow. And wow. I was just, I, I was ready to blow that. Get rid of it. That's right. And <laughs> ready it's to really, purge. <laughs> it's paying off. I've had one of my best months ever. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Last month. Now I went over there like the third week in December and I haven't been back over there yet. So I don't know what my final numbers are, but, um, yeah, it was going really good. So what about you, Jen? Um, we didn't have like a specific uh, sale, but we do have a what we call a customer appreciation day. And they do it every year uh, about, you know, maybe three weeks before Christmas. And they have it's uh, the stores open on a day that it's not normally open on, which uh, this year was a Tuesday. Uh, our stores normally closed Monday and Tuesday. So uh, it was heavily advertised on Facebook, and we got uh, a lot of people came in. And what they did is you could have a percentage off your booth, or they had uh, little holly leaves that they cut out of construction paper, and you could put those on certain items. And then when those came up front, uh, they would be 25% off. So it was kind of a nice way to push a few things out of the door that have been there a while. Oh, yeah. And it kind of encourages customers to go in and look around to find those items. So I, I, I think I tagged three or four and, and all of those items that I had tagged sold. So that was, it was nice to get rid of a few things. And of course, while people are in there looking, they find other good stuff too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So would you say you had a pretty good December then? Yeah, November and December were both good. And historically, even January does really well for me too. Since we're just a few days in, I can't tell if that's the case or not. But uh, usually, you know, of course, November, December, but January is almost as good as December. So uh, the store does sell uh, gift, you know, certificates. Mm -hmm. And that's something that people come in to redeem after the fact. So, yeah, I think that's a great gift idea. Yep. Definitely. So, um, okay, I guess I'm leading this. <laughs> yes, you are. You're in charge. <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> so, um, Tam had mentioned that we might want to talk about what our best and worst sellers were of 2017. So, um, Tam, you want to lead with that? I can. Uh, probably some of the best sellers for me last year were um, definitely purses. Really? The coach, like designer yes. purses? Yes. <clears throat> the coach purses, Dooney and Burke pur purses, um, sold really, really well, especially during the fall mm -hmm. and going leading up to like Thanksgiving. 
I sold several um, that actually put me up like as the I was the top seller for a couple of the months this year because of the purses. Um, I've sold clothes really well too. Uh, clothes have done really well. Um, probably the worst, um, which I thought would do good because the new movie it came out, but I thought because I bought a couple of clowns. Yeah, and thought that they would sell. No, never. I haven't. They're still there. And then milk glass. Really, not, not a good seller. Mm -mm. I'm. I have started collecting it, but then there's some pieces that, like, maybe I have duplicates of or whatever that I put in there. And milk glass is just not. Now that may change because I know that a lot of you know different items will trend for a little while. Um, but right now, milk glass is not selling. And at least it's not selling in this area because I've got it priced pretty reasonable. So I don't know. Um, John is asking, is somebody sharpening a pencil? <laughs> I'm not. I'm just sitting here. Not me. I'm just sitting here too. <laughs> Somebody got jewelry on that's, you know, no. making noise. <laughs> no. No. Um, I know that we've talked about this before, but just real quick, could you explain to everyone like how you prevent people from walking off with your purses? Because I know that's always been a concern for me as far as putting a nice purse in my booth. I mean, it'd really be pretty easy to steal. You just put it on your shoulder and walk out. I mean, no one's really yeah. going to notice. Um, well, I, actually, when we moved to the new place in July, um, it was an old CarQuest building. And the, <clears throat> pardon me, the shelving units were left there. And the shelving units have like little holes where the shelves go. Mm -hmm. And so I saw another vendor. What she did was she had a few designer purses and she would take zip ties and she would zip tie them to the shelf. And if they wanted the purse, then the the uh, associate that's working at the at the antique mall would come and clip it off so she could have it. So that really helps a lot because yeah, I'm in the mid. I'm kind of in the middle. I'm not. I don't have a perimeter uh, with the shelving units. What I've done is I took a um, quilt rack and then I zip tie the purse to the quilt rack. Okay. So it's kind of hard for somebody to walk out there with a the whole quilt rack. So exactly. <laughs> and it's it's really good basically idea. the same concept if they want, you know, the, the purse and I zip tie it loose enough to where they can get the purse open if they want to look inside of it or something like that. Yeah, that's smart. And so, yeah. So, and then they just come over if they want, decide they want it, they come over and just clip the zip tie off. So, okay. I mean, it's not foolproof. Yeah. I'm sure somebody could walk in there with a pair of scissors and cut it off if they really wanted to steal it. <laughs> but it is a little bit. You know, more of a deterrent. So, right. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think so too. Definitely. And the <laughs> the quilt rack makes a good display because they all hang. You know, and you can do display on both sides. Right. And who's walking around with scissors in their purse? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, unless you're planning to steal something. Uh, right. So, what about you, Jen? Well, everything I picked out sells wonderfully. I never had any duds. <laughs> okay, I'll tell the truth now. Um, uh, it seems like signs, you know, the ones with just different sayings, those still are doing pretty good for me. Uh, you said about milk glass, Tam. I've heard other people comment and ask me, do I sell it? Because theirs has slowed down too. So it's not just you or your area. It seems to be kind of a, you know, a downward trend at this point. But you never know when that's going to pick up again. Um, I'm still doing good with, I don't know, staple items, uh, home decor, things to hang on the wall, decorative items, uh, seasonal items. Um, as far as things not selling, I had for the longest time, I was selling Vera Bradley online. And then I put it in my booth and it was doing okay in my booth. And now even there it's really slowed down so i know that's de it was definitely on the decline for a while now it's like really down in the valley <laughs> so not sure what i'm going to do with those we are going to be doing a clearance uh, rack in the front for the next month or two so i may just go ahead and you know blow that stuff out but i don't know it's it's you get excited when you start finding stuff that you know is going to sell but you get maybe so far ahead that you have a decent amount left when things aren't selling so well so those purses have not been good 
Um, I do have a couple of designer ones. I think it was not this past summer, but even the previous summer, I have some vintage coach uh, all leather bags that I bought for like $5 a piece. Uh, wow, so I have good. like, yeah, I got probably four or five of those. So with the zip tie idea, I can finally, you know, just force myself to get those out and clean them up and get them out there. So, Ooh. whoops. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice sound. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, but just, I don't know, little things like that have seemed to slow up, but I'm actually buying some different items to put in the booth. So I'm kind of trying to, you know, once you think you get it, you get it figured out, then something changes or somebody else starts selling similar items or something happens yeah. and you just, you just don't know. So that's, that's probably my biggest issue now. I really, get rid of the dumb Veer Badly purses. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the idea of a clearance rack in your booth. I think that's a great idea and a really good mm -hmm. way to move that stagnant stuff that's been sitting there for too long. So I, I definitely wrote that down, and I'm going to probably try and implement a little bitty section somewhere uh, in my booth. That, and yeah, that actually is a good idea because there's a lady that has a booth at, at my antique mall, and she has an area like that. And I know every time I go in there and you know, to straighten up my booth or whatever. I always, every time I go in there, I always shop to see if there's anything new. And I oh, always I go to her clearance rack. Always do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I have that. If you've seen my booth tours, I have, it's, a, you know, a, it's got the clear glass and chrome and it's 25 by 25 and it's got like four shelves. And that's, we switch that out every month. So we're going to make that like the clearance stuff, the focus. And I even have some stuff uh, in my basement that I bought that I, I keep looking at and thinking, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy that now, but what am I going to do with it now that I have it? And that's what we're going to do is uh, go through and pull some of that old stock and mark it nice and low and, and just, you know, blow it out, get rid of it. Yeah. So when garage sale season yeah. rolls around, I mean, my basement is like up to my eyeballs. <laughs> so... I got to do something with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Does it sound like that we're sharpening a pencil still? I'm just no, making sure because somebody said they thought that my that this was rubbing on my zipper, so I tried to move it. <laughs> I think that's exactly what it was, and it sounds good now. Does everybody think it sounds better? Yeah. I mean, I'm not hearing it anymore. I never did hear it. I guess because it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I was going to say, like, for me, some of the things that really always sells well is artwork. Um, whenever I'm in the thrift stores, I'm always picking up, you know, the bigger size pictures and even the little ones. I've had success with that. Jewelry and the home decor. Home decor always sells well. And uh, globes. I usually always sell all of my globes. Um, and for the worst, I would say this year or last year, rather, it was cookie jars. I was really surprised that my cookie jars weren't selling because in the past, they've always been good sellers. What about y'all? Do you guys sell cookie jars? I've um, had them. Go ahead, Tim. I, I haven't sold any. I bought some this year. <laughs> I actually bought two. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't sold any in, I mean, I bought them for myself. I bought one for myself and one as a gift, but I haven't had any uh, cookie jars in my booth. So I, I don't know. I, I've i historically not really done that well on cookie jars. Um, if I occasionally find the ones that talk or you open them up and it says something, I always check online uh, with those, like, like the cop one, you open it up, it says, you know, stop, step away from the cookie jar uh, I have one I'm going to be listing this week that's, uh, it looks like a little red barn and it plays the uh, Green Acres theme. So usually I check uh, on eBay before I put them in my booth, but I don't seem to find them all that often, you know, any, any decent ones. Some of them are pretty new or they're chipped or just tired looking. It's, I think it's hard to donate those and they don't get beat up somehow before you get them. I agree because it's not like you're mm -hmm. packing something with a lot of care if you're going to be donating it, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that is probably something that's, if they haven't sold when I go back up there, um, probably this week or next week, if they haven't sold, they're definitely probably going to be going in the clearance section. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you go and you look at them and you threaten them and say, I'm going to take you home soon if you don't sell, they'll sell. <laughs> right. That's or, the because we're talking. Yeah, you have about to threaten it. them. Yeah. Yeah, I need to start doing that, talking to my my items that are not selling. 
Right. Yep. Um, so Jen had brought up, uh, maybe we might want to talk about what we have done to improve on our booth um, or maybe different things that we've tried out. And I think this is going to lead Jen right into your, um, your new ventures that you have going on, uh, especially with your plants. That's really intriguing. I, it's very interesting and I love to hear you talk about it. So do you want to tell everyone about okay, that? Okay, about, yeah, about, uh, I think it's been about two months now, eight or nine weeks. Um, we had some brown shelves in our booth and I did a from beginning to end of us updating our booth is we took those out and then we had some white shelves on the sides and then we went ahead and put those on the back and that really really has brightened up the space and at that point we said since we've torn up the booth this much we're going to totally move everything around so you know kitchen items went in a total different spot uh you know men's type items we moved them around so that really did help sales uh not only this time of year but also just moving stuff around really helped and then i've been uh, buying more things uh new to sell in the booth rather than just sourcing strictly from thrift stores and auctions and that type of thing so um, I have been selling incense, so I just purchased some more of that to go in the booth. And I started selling soap. So I've been thinking about doing it for like two and a half years. And then I finally just said, you know what, I'm just going to pull the trigger. And I, I really dug around and find a nice wholesale place uh, that uh, sells. And uh, they're usually, be, when I order them, they're probably between like $1.65 to like $1.85 a bar, and I've been selling them for $5. I've had those out there for maybe three weeks now, and they're doing really well. So I have like 10 or 11 different kinds, and uh, they've been doing really well. There's only one other person in our mall that sells soap, and they're more of a store-bought looking one, and they're uh, glycerin, which is the clear and uh, they're about the same price, but nobody was selling uh, what I have lim labeled as artisan soap. <laughs> so, but those have been doing really well. Uh, I've had lucky bamboo plants for a while. Um, I started ordering those off of Amazon. They're much cheaper than I was getting them locally. And I also uh, am selling air plants. So I know the weirdest thing, they're like, air plants? What in the world is that? Just Google it. You'll find all kinds of interesting. Uh, th and what started that, funny enough, was I was at an auction and there was a ton of pottery. And one of the flats was like 15 of these little teeny, uh, little teeny pottery plants hanging. So I was like, wow, that'd be great. I could, you know, maybe do some air plants or so I won that. They ended up being like maybe 40 or 50 cents each is what it came down to for what I paid. Uh, I ordered the air plants off of Amazon again. Um, and then when those came in, I was like, oh, great. Now how am I going to display these? And I uh, found somebody that had an old box. And I set it on its end. And I put in little cup hooks and have them hanging inside the box. It was in a, a video a couple times ago. And uh, so they, it makes a really nice display, and those have been selling. So, I mean, who would have thought plants? But they're right. doing really well, and, you know, why not? If it's selling, I'll keep finding a way to present it and, and buy them cheap and sell them. Uh, the air plants in the little uh, ceramic, I sell them for 12 And then I have the bamboo. I usually have two in a little container, and those sell for 12 so yeah and these two are good because they're very difficult to kill if you know what you're doing <laughs> right <laughs> we just had this discussion before <laughs> that if you have the lucky bamboo only use bottled water don't yes, use which i didn't water. know and mine died <laughs> <laughs> yep it will kill them it'll take three to four weeks but it will definitely kill them so yeah. i mean if you want repeat customers why not but <laughs> i have a little thing there that says right. only use bottled water yeah, and, and that's a good tip, too, if you're going to sell them in your booth. Put a little sign out so people will see it and know. Right, yeah. Yeah, but and I the, where, my, where my space is, I don't get any natural light, so they don't require that much natural light So for either of them. So that works good uh, for me, too, because you think, oh, man, I'm not anywhere near you know, a window, but yeah, they yeah. do fine in the artificial light. 
Jen, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, you said that you get the soap. Um, you found a good wholesale place. Do you have to buy like a certain amount? No, you can. Uh, if you buy over a certain amount, you get free shipping. Free shipping. Okay. If you buy, like you could go on and just buy individual bars. They end up being like $2 or a little bit more. Um, I, I buy mine. They sell it in a loaf. And then they, uh, I pay an extra like dollar forty for them to cut the loaf into one inch thick uh, soaps. I get ten out of a loaf, and then you can also uh, have them print labels that you wrap around and tape, um, and that's like an extra dollar forty as well to get ten of the labels. Um, eventually, I think I'm gonna do my own labels just to make it look nicer. Right. Uh, but for right now, I was really excited to just get them and put them in the booth and see how they did. Now, is it, so, is it like an all-natural soap? They do have an all-natural selection, and then they have other ones that, that aren't. The website I use is like, it's got at least 50 different kinds. Okay. So it's a crazy amount of soap. They have like, this is the best sellers, or this is a best seller. So I started out with a couple, you know, like antique sandalwood and ones that I thought, well, everybody will like those. Right. And uh, they're they're doing really well. So I'm very, very happy with it. I spent like $150 the first time. Uh, and I think I got like 10 loaves at that point. No, I think I got nine. And then, uh, and then I got free shipping because it was over like 120, 125. And then I ordered three more loaves and I had to pay shipping because I didn't order as much. So, you know, you can buy less, but then each individual costs more. But it's still, right. I mean, if you pay two or two ten and you're selling it for five, that's not bad either. Right. Yeah. I was going to make a suggestion, so. Jen. You said, you mentioned sandalwood. I love sandalwood. Like I said, I'm a throwback hippie. But um, might I make a suggestion for you to get some patchouli? There are a lot patchouli. of old timers who love the patchouli. Like I, I will wear even like patchouli oil sometimes as perfume. And oh. I've had people walk up to me and ask, are you wearing patchouli? Like people, older people. Oh. Really that stuff. Um, yeah. Cause I know they have some of that in different, different kinds or different combinations. So I'll have to do that next time. Right. And it's almost like a dying scent because a lot of the younger people don't know about it. So mm -hmm. when you do find it, I mean, I don't know about, Y'all, but I always get excited when I see something patchouli, you know, whether it's um, soap or a scented candle or something. I really love the, the incense. I know the mm, incense. Definitely. Some of them come in that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a very distinct scent. I like it. Right. Uh, but it's. I think it's one of those scents you either like it or you hate it. Yeah, I was just going to say it's like <laughs> black or white. There is no yeah. gray. Like yeah, yeah. It, so. I know I ordered the the incense I get is in small boxes that has eight each. And I put, I sell it for $2. And I was just, I got just a variety. So when I was going through and pricing it, um, they have, you know, this kind and that kind. And then one says, instead of frankincense, it said Frank incense. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> What? <laughs> So this incense evidently smells like Frank, whoever he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, going back to the plants, I can't remember. Hopefully I haven't already said this, but um, I know I had tried the bamboo plants in my booth before, and they didn't do too well. But I think I'm going to try it again and do it the way that you said, Jen, <laughs> with the right water, and maybe they'll mm -hmm. stay pretty and green. And I'm also going to try um, the air plants as well because I can get them for free in my backyard on my patio. I have several plants. Awesome. Um, we were talking about this before the show. So whenever they shoot off the little, um, what do you call them, like the little baby plants, I just you yeah. know, snap them off with my finger now and just stick them in another plant so I've got them growing everywhere. So I'm definitely going to like think that. Yeah, and I think uh, an idea that will help you sell the bamboo better is when you're out and about garage sales, thrift stores, anywhere, look for cute containers. Okay. Because I've taken out some that are really much nicer. Other ones are a little more plain. And if it's like an owl or I had one that was like an elephant, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't pay more than a dollar to a dollar fifty for the containers, but the containers will make it or break it because people are looking for something really unique 
I agree. And, and, yeah, and if it's something you're going to buy and you want to sell, just always, you know, I always just keep my eye out for that to mm -hmm. make sure that I get something that's unique. Right. So. And I think my problem was I had them in coffee cups. So <laughs> okay. I, I just yeah. don't think people were digging that. You know, I don't think they, you know, understood what I was trying to do. But I just thought my idea behind it was I thought it would be something really cute to maybe set in your kitchen on the window um, or something like that. But I think you're right. I'm going to change up my containers and try mm -hmm. it that way. Plus, if you get just even the clear ones and then you get maybe different color marbles Ooh, or marbles. different Good color idea. rocks. Yeah, the the marbles and those you can get really cheap at the dollar store. Yes, that's a good um, idea. Yeah, so I mean that's pretty cheap too. So, but like like I said, I'm always I always have a container downstairs, like a milk crate that's got you know if I find a cute little container, I just put it in there. And then during the summer garage sales, people sell the rocks that you get for a dollar. They'll sell it for twenty five cents or fifty cents. So yeah. I'd always be picking those up. So when I got some to sell. I would sit down and then, you know, start pulling out containers and, you know, match it up at that point. But you can get those cheap. As long as you're always keeping your eye open, you can get them for a cheap yeah, price. Such a satisfying feeling, I feel like, to be creative like that and create a yeah. product. Um, so real quick, I wanted to ask about the air plants. So I can't remember if you said, do we, um, like, put them together in the same manner that we do the bamboo, just like with some pebbles and some water or the marbles? So no soil. Um, no soil and they do not sit in water um, as opposed to the bamboo plants they have to be you know the roots have to be underwater uh, the air plants um, all you do is you can either spritz them like twice a week or you can take them and drop them in some uh, like a little bowl that has the bottled water let them you know soak in there for like an hour and then you just take it up and give it a shake off and the only reason I use rocks with those is because the containers I have hanging up are about this big. And if I just put it in, it would drop to the bottom and you wouldn't see it at all. So I just put the little pebble rocks and then just make a little divot in the center and then just set them right there. You can also buy special glue that is made to not harm them. And you can put them on driftwood. Oh my gosh. Um, you can, yeah. They also have like the little glass globes that have an opening. You could just set it in there. It's, I mean, since it doesn't have to sit in water or sit in soil, it's limitless how many different ways you can display it. Yeah, you can get really uh, these little creative. Ceramic, yeah, the ceramic containers I have, I only have a certain amount of those, and they're expensive if I were to buy them to sell them only in those. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to come up with some ideas, maybe troll Pinterest or something and find different ways of displaying them uh, and keep carrying them. Yeah. Well, you taught me something new today. I had no idea there was such a thing as plant glue. <laughs> yeah. In fact, right? Amazon, there you go, Amazon. So, yeah, it's, it's designed to adhere them to something without damaging them. So, who knew? <laughs> That's awesome. Great information. I'm excited to make some of these uh, plants, definitely. Cool. I want to know how they do. Yeah, I need to go back and watch some of your video videos, though. I'm really behind. So um, when the show is <laughs> over, you guys, I'm going to link, link uh, Jen's uh, YouTube channel and Tam's also so that you guys can go over there and check them out, too, because they're always uploading videos about their booth, and it's some really good information. Uh, so let's talk about, like, do we have, have we already talked about this? I don't think we have. Uh, plans, upcoming plans for 2018. Maybe new way of doing things. I know we mentioned we're going to experiment. We're all planning to experiment maybe with the plants. Um, anything else that you guys can think of? Well, I am going to uh, maybe go in and try to redo uh, the look of my booth. Probably here within the next couple weeks. Um, I bought, actually last year I bought, it's a coffee table, but it's in the shape of like a boomerang. Ooh. Or like an L shape, so I it thought sounds that like mid century, huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's very mid century. And when I bought it, my thinking was if I put it in a corner, that would give me more space because you, you all know what I'm saying. Yeah, it, definitely. Instead of like a shelf where you have to like butt it up in a corner with something else, I thought, well, if I put that, and it worked pretty good. But because it's a coffee table, I, if there's not unless you stack other tables on top of it to be able to have like shelves to, to display things. 
I just kind of wish it was a little bit, I wish it was an L-shaped shelving unit <laughs> instead of an L-shaped yeah. coffee table. Yeah. So my thinking with Mel was it was pretty good, but then it kind of worked out like it wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't the greatest. So yeah. it's actually out and in my garage now. So I'm, I can't decide whether I want to keep it and use it or in my own house or if I want to sell it. <laughs> right. Well, you know what so, you should do for that? You should put a really high price on it. Yes. And take it out to your booth. And then if it sells, then you can say, well, I made a lot of money on it. And if it doesn't sell after a while, then you can take it home and use it. That is a good idea, Jen. I think I will Isn't actually that a great do that. Idea? That is a great <laughs> idea. That's why you are one on here because you are <laughs> experience. <laughs> right. Yep. So I don't, yeah, I don't think sense. I told y'all, guess what I sold this month or last month rather. I sold that little Asian girl mannequin. Oh, you <laughs> did? What made me think about it was because you guys were talking about high prices and I had $200 on her. And um, so with the 50% off sale, somebody bought her for $100. So I still made about an $80 profit. I think I bought her for about 20. Oh, wow. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely a firm mm. belie believer in pricing things up a little bit. Yeah, that reminds yeah. me too. Uh, this past summer, I think it was, yeah, it was uh, the 127 yard sale. When I went to that, it was the day that my daughter was with me. We went to this one yard sale, and there was this lady, and she had these, um, they were wooden horses, and they were real heavy. They were probably, I guess, maybe about mm, 12 to 14 inches tall. But they were made of wood, and then they had like some kind, it looked like inlaid brass, and then some other kind of like stone that was like, in like it's hard for me to describe how they really look. really unique. They were beautiful, and I'd never seen anything like them. And I think the woman wanted like, I think I paid $10, there was two of them, and I paid $10 for both of them. And I put them in my booth. I listed them for thirty nine ninety five each because I looked online and they were going for like sixty and seventy dollars on eBay for these horses. So I put them in my booth for that. I sold one of them, but I still have the other one. So I'm hoping as it gets closer to Derby, maybe the other one will sell. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, you just always try and even if you think I, you know, I should ask this price, even go a little higher because you just never know. And if it if it sells, like sometimes I'll take something out and it sells really fast and I'm like, oh no, you know, you have that moment of darn, should I have asked more? You know, yeah. it's easier yes. to, it's easier to let it sit for a little bit and then mark it down than to have, you take it in and like two days later, somebody walks out with it. You're not, you can't chase them out the parking lot. Go, wait, wait, I want more for that. <laughs> All right. You know, you just, yeah. So go, you know, go a little high. You can always mark it down. You can't mark it up once it's gone. So I have a funny story about that. I had something in my booth and it set and set and set and set and it wasn't going to sell. So I brought it home and I put it in my garage for a couple of weeks and I thought, you know what, I'm going to take that back. I marked it up and within two days it sold. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe That's it. Funny. My husband couldn't believe it. He was like, you're kidding me. He said, you marked that up and it sold. And I was like, yep. <laughs> You know, when you demand a higher price, people, you know, if they see a high price on something, they stop and they look at it because they're like, wait, this is how much, you know, what am I, what am I looking at? What do I want to see that's going to make it worth that much? Yeah. So when you do something like that, it does catch people's attention. Yeah. So you just, you never know. Yeah, definitely. That's one thing. My husband gets on me all the time. He's like, you, you're pricing your stuff too low. You need to price it higher than that. But I don't know. I just think, you know, that's kind of high. I don't know if somebody will pay that or not. <laughs> no, do it. seriously, seriously, go a little higher. And then uh, I know uh, the antique booth uh, that I mall that I'm at now, uh, I can ask a higher price than the one I used to because the one I'm at now is a little more in the suburbs. The other one was a little bit more into the country. So right. when I moved, my sister and I, you know, were like, you know, we, maybe we should, you know, ask a little bit higher because we saw other booths were asking higher prices. And there's things I've sold for like almost twice as much than I ever would have asked in the other place. So yeah. why not go high and see what it does? It's, you know, it's okay to do that. Yeah, definitely. So earlier in the chat, we had a couple of questions I thought we'd address. Joanne asked if I was to... to 
to look to open an antique booth, what would be your number one piece of advice? That's not Jen, hard you, at all. <laughs> Jen, you can go ahead since you're the you're the veteran on this. Um, my first piece of advice would be don't go out and buy very expensive display pieces. You know, be patient and pick up stuff as you see it and as you think it'll fit in your space. I mean, you could seriously go out and spend a thousand dollars on fixtures and everything matching and everything looking a certain way. And you know, that's you're not you're really gonna stop yourself from making money first thing off. You know, use some of the pieces that you have. Uh, don't be, you know, so quick to go out and say, I gotta buy a million things. You know, kind of look around your house. What can I start selling mm -hmm. to get a feel of what I'm doing before I invest all this money in fixtures and sourcing and all that? So I think that would probably be uh, my advice for starting out. Um, you know, I guess, you know, you just want to go into debt like the first two months. <laughs> right. And then if you decide, yeah, or you're there five, six months and you paid all this money for all these fixtures, you know, some yeah. of the best fixtures I've gotten are from other vendors who are either right. moving their stuff around or they're leaving. So be patient. Don't expect to have, you know, a booth like you know i don't mean to sound like haughty when i say this not a booth like mine and i've been doing it nine years and it's taken a long time to get you know the look that we want so you know yeah as it's long a as process. you got good stuff yeah as long as you got good stuff people are going to come they don't care what it's displayed on you know take your time and uh you know fill things in as you find them don't you know don't be in a rush right that's really good advice. Um, so Christy Winland asked, do you think when people come to your booth that they are looking for older vintage items or new items? Which sells more or better? For me, I would have to say definitely a mix, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, same for me. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with my mall. They're not really strict. Um, you know, I've had people comment on some of my antique booth videos. They're like, this isn't antique stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, they're not really strict, you know. I could make bows here at the house and take them out there and sell them if I wanted to. So it's really just a mix of everything that sells for me. What do you guys think? I mean, it's yeah, pretty much for me, too. Um, you know, I've sold, I've sold vintage things. I've sold, you know, like I said, the coach purses. I sold clothes. You know, I have a whole mixture of stuff. I think what I have noticed is if you find items that are very unique instead of just your average, you know, run-of-the-mill stuff that you can get anywhere, if you try and find stuff that's very unique, whether it's new or vintage, um, I think it sells you know, I think those things sell, sell really well. I think the word you're looking for is weird. <laughs> weird. Yeah, exactly. If you yeah. look at it and it's like, oh my gosh, what is that? And you get it, you're going to sell it. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had people ask me in my videos all the time, you know, well, you know, what kind of stuff do you buy or what should I sell? And that's such a broad question. But I tell, or people say, well, what do you look for to sell? They're not interested in the business. They're interested in what I'm saying, but they're not looking to emulate that. And I say, I say, you know, when you go in a garage sale or a thrift store and you look at something and you go, who would buy that? I'm like, me, I would buy that. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. and like you said, a, a good variety, a good mix of things. The name of our store is Antiques and Uniques. So it doesn't have to be antique stuff. And... I think having a wide variety, whether it's all old, all new, uh, there's a certain amount of people you're going to lose. They're going to look and just keep walking. So to have a wide variety of products and a wide variety of interests uh, will keep your sales up. Yeah. Um, my Sharon asked, how long have all of you had a booth? Well, for me, uh, the 1st of February will be one year. Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. And actually, I'd kind of like to elaborate on that because I was talking to my husband the other day and I said, you know, I can remember when I started my booth, I was so afraid. Yeah. Like I had been thinking about it for a long time and I had been thinking, you know, I don't know if I'll do good. I don't know if, 
you know, I can find the right kind of stuff that people want to buy, you know, do they like my kind of style, the stuff that I would think other people would like. It was a very scary thing at first. And just like Jen said a few minutes ago, if you go into this and you get like your display items and stuff and you don't pay a lot of money for them, you use what you have around your house, which is what I did because I thought, you know, if this doesn't work out, I don't have a whole lot of money in it. Right. And so it ended up working out. And so, you know, it's a scary thing, but you got to just kind of take that leap of faith. And, <laughs> and also, you know, make sure if you're going to do this, that it's something that you really want to do, that you enjoy doing it. Because right. if you don't enjoy doing it and you don't like to do it, and it's a chore for you to have to go down there and change your display and you don't want to do it very often, then don't do it. It's not for you. You have to really have a passion for it to do it. So that's really kind of my advice. <laughs> no, that's true. Um, well, let's see. The first place we were in, we were there, I think, seven, seven years. Yeah, seven years. And in the place we're in now, we've been there almost two. So it's been eight and a half, nine years we've been doing this. And even the, the, the change from the first place we were at to the place we're at now was totally different because we're like, hey, we've been doing this a long time. We know what we're doing. We know what sells. And then we get to a different location, 25 minutes apart, which is worlds apart for what sells and what doesn't sell. So there was kind of we had this learning curve again uh, of, you know, what are we doing? What's going to sell? What should we look for? So it's as long as you keep learning, because that's once you think this is what sells, this is what I'm going to do. I mean, trends change, styles change, customers change. So, you know, if you think I'm going to, you know, this is tried and true, it may be and it may not be for long. So you just don't know. You and that's interesting. That you, that's interesting. You say that, Jen, because you were in your other place for so long before you moved. But see, yep. I was only in the first place for about five months and then we moved to a different location. So I didn't really have a chance to see, which I mean, the locations, they're mm -hmm. only like three quarters of a mile apart, but still it's a different location. Um, but yeah, that's because I, like I said, I didn't have a chance to, to be in one location to see what was going to sell and, you know, for a long period of time like you were. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I first started out, um, it was in March of 2015, I'm pretty sure. And when I first started out, I was with my grandma <laughs> and um, she did it with me for a little while. Um, and then when she decided she was done with it, I actually moved to a little bit of a smaller space um, and I've been doing it, you know, just me and running it by myself. Um, so almost two years, I guess this March will be two years, right? Or that be three years. I'm not good at math. <laughs> it goes fast. I was going to yeah. ask. I was going to ask. Yeah, that you you said for a while you had thought about doing it and you were afraid. And I'm sure a lot of people who are listening or who may view this in the future, I've had a lot of people say, oh, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. So what made you finally pull the trigger and make that decision to do it? Um, I guess because, um, and uh, I'm not trying to toot my own horn about this, but you know, my house, the way that it's decorated when I have people over people that's never been to my house and they come in and they'll say, Oh my gosh, you know, you have such a good sense of like decorating. And you know, I've had people tell me that over several years and I've had a little bit of training in like staging and stuff. So, and then, you know, I've had people tell me I have a good eye for things, you know, as far as like buying things and stuff like that. So, I guess just that encouragement from other people and then, you know, just thinking about it really long and hard and thinking, you know, if I don't spend a lot of money, I can at least try this. And if it doesn't work out, then I haven't lost much. So I just, actually my daughter was with me when we went to the antique mall and she was like, you should get a booth down here. And I was like, Oh, I don't know about that. And then I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And so, I finally just went down there and put my name on the list and I, and she was like, Oh, I've got so many people in front of you. And I was like, Oh, well that's okay. You know, cause I don't have, you know, anything. I haven't gone out and bought a bunch of stuff. You know, I have a few things. Well, she called me within a week and I was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I don't have any display things. I don't have enough, <laughs> enough stuff to put in. I was kind of freaking out that she called me that quick. So 
I guess that's probably what kind of encouragement from other people. Yeah, I just, I hope people just, you know, make the decision and do it. And like, especially if you said there's a list, you know, yeah. you can get on that list because mm -hmm. I've had people come in. We literally have hundreds of people on the waiting list to get into our mall. And I tell, they're like, oh, I don't know. And I say, just put your name on the list because there's so many people that signed up a while ago. And when they get on the phone and say, hey, we have space, people's life circumstances change, people move. Yep. You know, people say, oh, I kind of thought I wanted to and I really don't. So they'll just keep going down the list. You know, and, I've and got a it's not story like about that, too. Um, I put my name on the list to get a bigger booth. Recently? Uh, no. Well, my name has been on ever since we moved into the new place. So I guess since July, I'm in just a, a like a medium sized booth. But I went ahead and put my name on the list to get a bigger booth. And there were several people in front of me. Well, the owner, she just told me the other day, she was like, there's, she said there, I have one other person on the list for a bigger booth and then you. So she said, of course, nobody's leaving right now that I can foresee or that I know of. So she said, you may still be waiting a while, but you know, she said, I just want to let you know you're second. So I was talking to my husband about it and I was like, you know, I don't know if I need to do that or not because in order to have a bigger booth, I got to have more storage. And I can barely fit everything that I need for my booth now in my garage right now and just for my husband to be able to get the car in there. <laughs> so I'm yeah. thinking until I can get, you know, a bigger storage, I'm thinking that if she does come and say, Hey, I have a booth available, I might just pass on that until but leave my name on there for the next time. Yeah, in fact, our mall um it has two different lists. So it has a list of outsiders who've never had a space who want to come in and, you know, to be part of the mall and then people who are in the mall already who want a, a bigger space, a smaller space, a different space, right. um, you know, that they get that priority treatment. So uh, it works out nice because if you're looking to expand your booth, then you're already tried and true of being in the mall as opposed to somebody just coming in and you don't know how they're going to work out. So right. it's a good way to do it. That's a nice advantage, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so we did have uh, one last question uh, from Dwayne in the chat. It says, do you feel that the majority of the antique mall buyers are male or female, or have you noticed a difference? That's a good question. We, I think we have a good combination um, of uh, individuals that come through. We have a lot of couples shopping together. Um, we have some... Uh, some spaces that have comic books, coins, uh, you know, big metal signs or fishing gear or things. So there are a lot of different interests for men and for women. So sometimes they'll come in and shop together. Sometimes they'll come in and go their own separate ways. <laughs> or we have a cafe area. So sometimes the husbands will do a quick zip through and then they'll go sit and have a coffee while they're waiting on their wives. So I think we have a good combination of interests for, for both. And it seems to be, if it, if it tipped in one way or the other, it would be a little bit more women, I think. Yeah, I agree. But it's pretty even, yeah. surprisingly. Yeah, I same, agree. Same for mine. I agree, too. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of, like, um, like, a lot of vendors that sell the military-type stuff. And mm -hmm. I think that also brings in a lot of the guys. But, I mean, a lot of times I'll see couples browsing the aisles together um, and we also have a cafe and a lot of times you'll see some of the men just sitting in there. <laughs> yeah. Or by the registers, we have, we have a line of chairs and we call it husband row because they're all sitting there <laughs> like, like a lineup, you know, sometimes I'll say that to them. There'll be like three or four husbands and I'll say, y'all look like a lineup and they all just laugh. So they're like, no, nah, just waiting for the wife. And I'm like, that's what the chairs are here for. We'll keep entertained until she gets herself up here with her stuff. So <laughs> I think one thing that I've decided I'm going to do this year is I'm going to try to create a men's section in my booth. Oh, that's such a good idea. Because I don't have that. And we do have, like the owners told me that they have men that come in and say, okay, where's the men's section? Where's the men's stuff? And specifically ask for that. Mm -hmm. So, and I might try to kind of get my husband's help with that. I think he would enjoy because he likes to go to yard sales with me and stuff. So maybe get his kind of help on 
doing a little area of men's. And I men's really stuff. feel like we could do a whole show just on that, Tam. Like um, yeah. when it comes around to doing the show on your channel, maybe we might want to consider uh, talking about that because um, I think that people would really be interested to hear that information. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Yeah, I have a, like a little small area that has some guy stuff. Um, you know, or th things that are geared toward guys, you know, like I have a couple Galileo, uh, temperature things with the balls in them mm -hmm. and, you know, different signs. And, you know, my wife says I don't listen very well, or at least that's what I thought she said, or, you know, so I kind of have men focused item in one spot. So, but my favorite sign I had there sold, uh, it said my husband wanted more space. So I locked him outside. <laughs> 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 so, like that. so we yeah, a, we have a sign by our checkout area that says your husband called. He said that you can um, buy anything you want. <laughs> yeah, some people have <laughs> that in awesome. their booth. Yeah. I've seen that before. Yep. All right. Um, so sticking with the man cave, Dwayne asked, do, mm -hmm. does a man cave section and a ladies section, wait, oh, do a man cave section and a ladies section. Um, yeah. That's a good idea. So for me, yeah. like I would put, if I do decide to get some more man stuff, I would probably put it like somewhere close to the edge, like when people are walking by so I can lure the men in. There you go. <laughs> <All right>? Yeah. <laughs> Pink and frilly and happy stuff. They'll just keep on walking. Exactly. <laughs> and I do actually have, I've put a few things. I have like a sign that says cowboy. Um, I put a UK license plate in there. Um, I've got a pair of men's shoes in there that are really nice. Um, not, you know, th those are just a few little things that I added after the first of the year, just to kind of see how it's going to go, you know, so. Yeah, yeah I say have it grouped together. You know, if you're not going to have a huge section to have it grouped in one area so that, you know, if they see that, then they'll know there's other stuff. And like you said, have it toward the front would probably be a good idea. Yeah. And that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea to have it grouped together because men don't shop like women do. Men, right. they go in, they want to see exactly what they're looking for, and they go out. They don't like browse and look at all kinds of different stuff like women do. So, yeah, that is a good idea to have it all together. Definitely. Yeah, my my favorite story is uh, whenever anybody comes into our booth, if my sister and I are there, you know, putting stuff away or straightening up, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll, we'll step out of the booth. So a lot of times customers are there and they don't know – that, that it's our booth and a uh, husband and wife came and the wife starts looking through everything and the husband steps back and goes, look at all this crap. <laughs> and I, I thought that was so funny. I'm like, I look at Kim and I go spoken like a true man. And she's just still looking and he's just standing with his hands on his hips. It was so funny. Oh, it's so funny. I love it when you tell that story. <laughs> Um, because I do the same thing. Like when people walk in my booth or they look like they want to come in there, you know, I will walk out like you do and, you know, yeah. let them, cause you know, really it's a, good, it's a good time to listen in too and see what they're saying. Mm -hmm. you exactly. Know? Um, Julie thrifty paper garden says, does the mall advertise a sale and wait, let me scroll down and events. Mine yes. does. Definitely. Yeah, mine does too. They advertise in like on Facebook and I think they run an ad in the paper. So anytime yeah. we're going to have a sale or event, they'll always do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we get a lot of good responses from Facebook. Um, yes. And in fact, I'm on the ad uh, committee uh, for our mall. So I see a lot of where our money is going. And Facebook is the biggest bang for our buck when it comes to that. So if we have a special event going on, or something like that it, it draws in a lot of people and in fact something you guys might see if it's something you guys could do at your mall is uh the city that we're in we contacted the uh police officers and said could you come in and have like a community hour or two hours where you can sit and just talk to people and they advertised it as coffee with a cop oh and we had a we had a lot of good response uh, from that. And it was funny. A couple of people would come in and go, is there something going on? There's cop cars out front. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, we're good. Come on in. So it was, it was, it was a lot of fun and it did draw people in. So, you know, and they did it of course for free and it helps them communicate with, you know, the people in the area and if they have any questions or just want to shake their hand and say, thank you for your service. Yeah. 
So. Well, yeah. I don't know about y'all, but my takeaway today is I definitely want to implement a clearance rack, a men's section, and those um, bamboo and air plants, definitely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely. I'm super excited about that. And I was going to say, too, we had a guy come in uh, just actually last week and said, was asking for, looking for golf clubs. Really? Yeah, the owner was in there, and she was like, no, we don't have any golf clubs yet. She said, probably here in the next couple months, though. So, yeah, somebody was actually coming in and looking for a specific item, a man. So Wow. Yeah, because that was pretty cool. I see golf clubs all the time at the thrifts and garage sales, but I honestly oh, yeah. didn't think to buy them. So how would you, would you like sell them like as a bag with all the clubs in it or would you price the clubs individually? I have no idea. Golf okay. clubs are not my forte. <laughs> let's, let's add that to the list of things we talk about for the men's cave when we do that on your channel. See, that's like having a man shop for a woman's purse. There's so many brands and styles. Yeah, that's true. Right. You really have to get yourself educated on, you know, what they are and what they're worth. Definitely. And I know some of the brands of golf clubs, but <clears throat> just like you said, you know, it kind of is like <laughs> women's handbags. You know, there's so many different, <clears throat> excuse me, so many different types that you, you definitely have to educate on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Prairie uh, Picking Girl says, I'm taking in my soap that Pudgy turned me on to. I got a rack awesome. of Hobby Lobby. I'm excited to drop it off. Yay. All right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It's, I tell you, I, I, I don't like to buy specific things that are very similar to what other people are selling. So when I noticed nobody was selling soap, I'm like, I just have to jump on it and, and make it happen. And the quality, if she got it where I did, um, I mean, the quality is just, you can't be beat. So just get on there look around, find out what you can afford, you know, just buy a little bit and try it out. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Start out with a little that's amount and see how you do with it. Yeah. We, we have a new vendor that just moved in. Um, she just has like a shelf unit, but she makes um, hand cream. Oh, that's nice. And it's made out of all natural, like it tells the ingredients, everything's fine. But yeah, she makes it herself and sells it. And, I think she's done pretty good. She's only been there like not even a week and she's already sold a couple. So that's okay. pretty good. I'm getting another yeah. idea for a show topic here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so just so you guys know, we do our an antique booth talk every, well, not every Wednesday, but the first Wednesday of every month. And next month it will be on Jen, the Pudgy Pickers channel. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, uh, we'll look for that in February and we will come up with a topic um, and let you guys know about it and I also want to invite invite everybody to come and join our Facebook group it's called antique booth talk um, over there you can find out uh, what our show topics will be and whose uh, channel the show will be on because we are a rotating show we take turns hosting um, does anybody, do you guys have anything you want to, um, actually, yes, I'd like to add something. If, uh, anybody watching has any ideas for subjects to talk about, just leave them in the comment section. Yeah, that's a great idea. Definitely. Yeah. We can get some ideas from other people too. Yeah. Always looking for show yeah. topics. Plus I'll always plug my, uh, podcast. Yes, that I have on my YouTube <laughs> channel with my sister called Two Sisters, One Booth, where we talk about every week I have um, a different, uh, uh, different topics of from staging to sourcing to all kinds of things. And I think we, I'm putting up my 37th podcast today. Wow. And wow. yeah, I know. So, um, you know, keep finding out lots of stuff to talk about on there and we get silly and talk about stupid things and laugh like idiots. And it's just like they're sitting there with us and giggling along. You know, we had a couple weeks ago, I had uh, funny sourcing stories and we were just like hysterically laughing about all the different stories that since I'm outsourcing two to three times a week, I, I you know, I got a ton of stories and all kinds of funny things that happen. So you can laugh at my expense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also I would like to say I have not, we were talking about this before the show started, I have not made a video in a while. It's been a little bit. Two reasons for that. Number one, well, the holidays, of course. Uh, yes. Number two, my device that goes in my car to hold my phone broke. Uh-oh. 
and I haven't had any way to do ride-alongs. So for Christmas, my husband bought me a new one. So <laughs> now I have my new device, and hopefully I'll be uh, putting out some some con some more content here pretty soon. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I took a week off, so. I mean, I had people messaging me to make sure I was still alive. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't have I don't have enough subscribers yet. They're not really worried about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we will wrap this up. And um, if you guys think of any great uh, show topics you want to share with us, you can always share them in the Facebook group or um, here on this video. Uh, once it's over, you can uh, come back and. Uh, leave comments if you like. So thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you being here with us and we will see you in the next show. Bye everybody. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye. See you next time.